The U.S.-led anti-ISIS coalition has launched its first strikes in Syria. Now, of course, we had been engaging in some limited airstrikes in Iraq for about a little bit over a week, but now we have struck multiple targets uh, in Syria, uh, cities west of Aleppo, um, and a general of the, the U.S. military is saying that this is only the beginning. Of course, we have uh, more details. The strikes were by the U.S. We also had uh, multiple uh, allies in the region who helped us out with those strikes, including Bahrain, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, uh, Jordan, and the United Arab Emirates. Um, four different cities in Syria were struck. I, I believe we have some footage of, of the strikes in the aftermath, which we'll show you. Uh, you're going to see there the, the typical video gamey look at what war looks like in 2014 as those strikes go in. Um, four different ISIS-held cities were uh, targeted, including Raqqa, which ISIS has indicated is its operational headquarters in Syria, Dair el-Zur, Hasaka, and Abu Kamal all struck. And you're seeing there, obviously, uh, quite a few cities held by ISIS in Syria right now, um, stretching through uh, the, the north and the east of that country. Uh, we also know there were about eight strikes uh, at that point against another terrorist organization, which we'll tell you a little bit more about um, in due time. And we have confirmations that some civilians were killed during those airstrikes, which took place throughout uh, late yesterday uh, and, and the night. So yeah. what's your initial reaction to us moving beyond Iraq into Syria as we've promised we would? Well, I just find it interesting that now at this point we have done airstrikes or have engaged in some sort of military action against Afghanistan, Pakistan, Yemen, Somalia, Libya, Iraq. Mm -hmm. uh, in the case of us fighting against ISIS in Syria and doing these airstrikes, of course, as you know, Obama did this without congressional authorization. There are constitutional issues to that, but no one really seems to be discussing it. And if you really want to talk about our foreign policy as a whole and whether or not it's been effective, what I fail to understand is we launched a preemptive war back in 2003, mm -hmm. okay? That preemptive war and our counterterrorism efforts have not been successful, to mm -hmm. say the least. If anything, we've only made matters worse. So this is an extension of failed foreign policy, which enrages me beyond belief because here's what doesn't happen in, in, in the Middle East, okay? U.S. aggression doesn't lead to uh, less terrorists. U.S. aggression has led to more recruitment yeah. among terrorist groups, including ISIS. So The Intercept reported uh, about how these current airstrikes have actually increased recruitment to ISIS considerably. So what we're doing right now, I mean, look, it's probably too soon to make a definitive uh, or a a declaration of a failed uh, attempt or whatever it is, but I don't think that this is the type of foreign policy that's going to lead to good results. I yeah. think that this is the U.S.'s effort to engage in perpetual war because we have people that are making a lot of money by remaining in war. Yeah. Yeah, I think the only outcome that will not come about as a result of this is that one ISIS fighter will like crawl atop of the rubble and wave a white flag. It's not Nobody sees happen. that happening except perhaps uh, Bill O'Reilly. And yeah, as you said, like of, of course it, it's led to increased recruitment. That we've been we've been saying that it was going to happen. We know that's an expected outcome. It's like the truth that shall not be named amongst the mainstream press, though. For some reason, the idea that if you bomb these people, they'll find it easier to rally people to their cause. For some reason, that, that's uh, unspeakable uh, for the press. But one thing that we do have to point out, that, that thankfully this was discussed quite a bit, I believe Vox had, had a short talk about it. This is undoubtedly, while not yet a win for us, is clearly a win for the Assad regime. Because it wasn't that long ago, before we went in and dismantled, for the most part, their chemical weapons uh, uh, capabilities in Syria, that we were considering as a country going in and bombing Assad to hell. Mm -hmm. And yet now we're going in and we're taking out his enemies, uh, the rebels that are fighting against him in Syria. And so he has to be like slow clapping at the very least. The strikes against ISIS were not the only strikes that took place last night. We also, uh, just the US, not with our Arab allies launched eight different airstrikes against uh, the the Khorasan terrorist organization. Now, if you haven't heard about this, uh, you're not alone. Almost no one outside of members of the intelligence community and some um, elected representatives for the, for the U.S. government had heard about it prior to about last week. Uh, but we knew, do know a little bit about it. It operates in Syria. It's believed to have about 50 active members, and it's under the prote protection of Jabhat al-Nusra, which is an Al Qaeda affiliate in Syria. 
Um, they're led by a guy named uh, Musin Al Fadli, and they're considered to be particularly deadly because um, they have talked about launching attacks against Western targets, including the United States. And it's believed that they have been working with one of the lead bomb makers for Al Qaeda, and so it's believed that they will have advanced IED capabilities. We have a couple of quotes from uh, Pentagon spokespeople giving a little bit of information about this organization, which previously we hadn't known about. Um, this is from Rear Admiral John Kirby saying, we had very good indications that this group, which is a very dangerous group, was plotting and planning imminent attacks against Western targets to include the U.S. homeland, and it was on that basis that we struck targets, Khorasan targets, inside Syria. He goes on to say, we believe that the individuals that were plotting and planning it had been eliminated, and we're going to continue to assess the effectiveness of our strikes going through today. Back to what I was saying about their working with former uh, Al-Qaeda bomb makers. Um, a counterterrorism official anonymously said, uh, they are taking the knowledge of Al-Qaeda and the Arabian Peninsula's master bomb maker and experimenting with their own designs for undetectable IEDs, that being improvised explosive devices. Mm -hmm. And as I alluded to, very few, including politicians, were aware of the existence or the, the threat posed by Khorasan prior to these strikes. One is Representative Peter King who said, Congress has known about it for several months. I'm surprised it, uh, the name even came out. It was supposed to be top secret, classified, and it wasn't until last week that an AP story had it in there. But we weren't supposed to talk about it. The intelligence community has known about it, uh, that they are extremely lethal and dangerous. So let's stop right there with that quote, because I think that you know the mentality that Congress has and the mentality that the executive branch has is really fascinating when it comes to any type of unilateral action abroad, right? Mm. When it comes to times of war, not only do I think that we should engage in war only to defend national security here in the United States, but I also think that public opinion is extremely important, right? But public opinion has completely has been taken out of it completely, right? Mm -hmm. It's not even a, a part of the decision-making process. And at the same time, we now have members of Congress that also don't play a role. What I find fascinating is, again, Obama decided to uh, do the airstrikes and his entire strategy against ISIS without congressional authorization, mm -hmm. right? But how how is that okay? How is it that you ignore public opinion and at the same time you ignore Congress when you go against a terrorist group that doesn't really pose an imminent threat to the United States? Now, if ISIS does pose an imminent threat to the United States, tell me why. Yeah. Tell me how. Then maybe you'll drum up public support. And look, there are some polls indicating that people are in favor of doing airstrikes mm. uh, against ISIS, right? But a lot of that has to do with fear mongering that you see, see in the mainstream press. Now, the beheadings, in my opinion, were more about provoking U.S. military action mm -hmm. against ISIS because they knew that that would strengthen their base. That would strengthen them with more recruitment. That's exactly what has happened. So we're doing exactly what ISIS wants us to do. Yeah. But at the same time, we're also doing exactly what private contractors and weapons manufacturers want us to do, this perpetual war that makes people wealthy in this yeah. country. Well, that, that's a great point by you about having to justify the imminent threat that they, they keep implying, they keep alluding to this threat. And I think that that's why Khorasan is suddenly, you know, the most dangerous organization operating in Syria, mm -hmm. because they have to say, look, we can't prove that ISIS is trying to kill us in America right now, but Khorasan, they were super deadly. They have advanced Iron Man IEDs and stuff like that. So I think that's why they were making the case. And that's why I, I do question it a little bit. I mean, this organization that previously almost no one, even in Congress, had heard about is suddenly this massive threat without any indication given to their capacity to get either their members or their weapons into the United States. It seems like they were probably bombed pretty effectively. That's what they want us to believe. So it's difficult to even have someone go in and report on it and find out if they're a real threat. It's, it seems very convenient. It's just surprising to me that Peter King is not in favor of the public knowing about this big, scary threat. Yeah. Right? It seems like he was shocked and surprised that all of a sudden there are reports about this, like, oh, no one should be talking about it. The U.S. should unilater unilaterally, you know, launch a war against mm. this particular Al-Qaeda-linked terrorist group, but the public shouldn't know about it. Yeah. I mean, what's the point of a democratic process then? Yeah. Yeah, and, and so back to what you said about the, the authorization, it, it was a very interesting process because Obama came out after being called a wuss and like he didn't have a plan against ISIS and he came out and said, look, I've already got the authorization I need from you know 60 years ago or, or after the September 11th attacks. And, but then he did try to get the authorization and, and Congress and the Senate did okay it as part of a continuing resolution, almost as if they were trying to hide their support for it. And I, and I don't think at this point 
uh, Republicans or Democrats really know exactly where they want to be seen to stand. Because the Republicans definitely want us to go more all out than, than Obama is currently doing, but they also don't want to be seen to be supporting the president. Mm -hmm. And so it's an interesting situation. And, and I don't know if you were to leave it directly up to the, the, the people, if you could do that, if you would want to. Because uh, we did cover last week recent polls that show that um, the American people right now massively, overwhelmingly support Republicans to defend us from terrorism and international conflict over Democrats. Look, we, we know right now what the Democratic plan looks like. I don't like it. I have a feeling I'd like the Republican plan a lot less. I absolutely agree.